There is something magic to these ancient paths that millions of seekers have walked before. And I've heard so many beautiful and miraculous stories from people who walked on the Camino de Santiago that I felt called to embark on my own journey. In this video, I'll take you to the highs and lows, the moments of pain and tears, the miraculous occurrences and the profound insights I encountered during my journey on the final stretch of the Camino. From Santiago to Finisterre, or better referred to as the end of the world. The day I started walking, it is exactly one month ago that I've received this really unexpected diagnosis of having an autoimmune disorder. Despite it being a frightening experience at first, it kind of opened up something inside of me and I understood almost instantly that this is not an issue of my physical body, but an urging of my soul to seek a deeper connection to myself and to this intelligence that is the source of all creation. So I decided to let go of my fears and really simply just follow my intuition. And it brought me here. On this journey, I had made it a habit to connect with my higher self to journaling. So on that very first morning, I asked my soul if there was anything I should pay special attention to. Strangely, while my mind remained completely silent, the word stick popped into my head. So on day one, I set off from Santiago to Negrera, embarking on a 22 kilometer trek that unfolded through beautiful woods and charming villages, including a medieval bridge that really stood out as the highlight of my first day. Unfortunately, things took a turn for the worse after that. So I'm on the last couple of kilometers, last couple of miles, and my knee is kind of hurting. Totally forgot that I have the weak spot on my right knee. The pain in my knee intensified to the point where I simply couldn't continue walking. While sitting on the side of the road, a fellow pilgrim came by and kindly offered me her walking sticks. To my surprise, we discovered that we were both staying at the same pilgrim's hostel for the night. She was so kind to provide me with some natural cream and tape for my knee. And later, during dinner, we had this beautiful, deep conversation about the search for faith. It really lifted my spirits after this discouraging end to my first day. I don't know, it's kind of weird because I came here to walk and now I might not be able to walk. Luckily, I was feeling relieved of the pain the next morning and was able to continue walking. I bought a pair of my own walking sticks, had my knee taped and supported and was ready to go. I planned to walk only 13 kilometers that day to offer some rest for my knee, but halfway through the pain came back. I just feel pretty sad right now because my knee is still hurting a lot and I, I don't know, it just doesn't feel right to keep walking. Okay, so I just decided to take the bus to the next, um, to my next place. It's just hurting too much and now there is a mountain coming up and I think my knee will just not uh, take it. Okay, so at that point I had basically given up on my plan to walk to Finisterre. Or I guess I should rather say I had simply surrendered to the situation. However, the bus I was waiting for in the middle of nowhere never showed up and I couldn't reach anyone on my phone to send me help. So while feeling kind of desperate, I did the only thing I could do. Continue walking. <laughs> What happened next was really, really unexpected. It's so crazy because my knee is not hurting right now. <laughs> I'm very confused. 
So being kind of baffled by the fact that there was absolutely zero pain in my knee, I continued walking, expecting it to return any second. But even after miles of walking, it didn't. Oh my god, I'm just uh, so happy right now. I'm just laughing and smiling and feeling so amazing because the pain in my knee is gone. It's like a miracle. I'm like having the, the most amazing epiphany because yeah. <laughs> Letting go. That was the moment I really understood something. When I let go of my attachment to my idea how things should be, when I let go of my resistance to what is, when I stop pushing and needing and instead surrender to the situation, life starts to flow effortlessly and in perfect harmony again and we allow it to unfold in the most beautiful and miraculous ways. From this point onward, I entered a state of flow. I felt one with the path, the act of walking, and with everything around me. I embraced each step at my own rhythm, immersing myself in the tranquility of nature, acknowledging the divine essence in all that surrounded me, and enjoying the moments of connection and inspiration shared with fellow pilgrims. I covered a distance of 19 kilometers from Villaserio to Ponte Olvera on the third day. Despite a rainy start to the day, I continued my journey with a sense of ease and joy and luckily the sky soon cleared up. It was a beautiful, peaceful stretch and finally, on that fourth day of walking, I caught my first glimpse of the sea. of Se after 21 kilometers. Finally it was the day I would reach the end of the world. From Tse to the Cape of Finisterra, I had only 15 kilometers to cover, and I was excited. There are many reasons why people decide to walk on the Camino. For me it was about opening myself up to the language of my soul and the universe. And while walking day after day, I felt how my heart became more and more receptive to the divine presence and wisdom that we all carry within. There is this pristine guidance and knowledge we can tap into when we become still enough to catch it when it arises. journey I really understood that we only need to express a desire or ask a question and we will be answered, sometimes in the most unexpected ways. I arrived in the city of Finisterra and took a little rest. Even though I was eager to reach the Cape, which was another three kilometer hike, I took the advice of some fellow pilgrims to go to the Cape in the evening in order to watch the sunset. So I did. Somehow I felt drawn to take a trail off the normal route, leading me to the woods up on the mountain and to the moment I had waited for. During my 
way down to the lighthouse, I crossed paths with a pilgrim who, strangely enough, offered me his walking sticks in order to protect my knee on the steep descent. This random encounter way off the usual track unfolded into a beautiful conversation about meditation, about the pursuit of inner peace and purpose and creative expression. As we sat there, I joked how, upon arriving at this place, I really thought God would finally talk to me. It was in that very moment it struck me that she had spoken to me all along, through the people I had met, the little insights and experiences, and the profound awe that had accompanied me on this journey. The next morning it was time for me to return to Santiago. Despite my plan to leave in the evening, I spontaneously had the urge to take the early bus. And while secretly hoping to sit alone, a man took his seat next to me. As it turned out, he was an alchemist who had walked on the Camino for months. In the one and a half hours we spent together, he taught me about embodying unconditional love about being guided by joy and following the smiles on people's faces and the little signs along the way. He gifted me this heavy little black rock, a meteorite he had collected on a moon-shaped beach close to Finisterra. And I was just so touched because while walking on the Camino, I had been wanting to take a stone from the trail with me as a memory, but I hadn't found the right one. But here it was, coming to me. This was my story of walking the Camino. But there are just as many magical stories out there as there are pilgrims on this path. And maybe it will be soon time for you to add yours. Mm -hmm.